looking for the best products to make the area of your home for your dog less ugly and more functional, listen up. It has been a journey, and I'm sure you can relate, to find products that I can use in my home for my animals that they like, that they use, that stand up to the test of time, are durable, washable, they help protect my home, my floors, but also aren't super ugly. And in this video, I wanna show the setup I have here for Marlo. Marlo here is our new foster puppy. She's a puppy mill survivor, and we really wanted to create a safe space in our common living room area for Marlo, but this is something I think is really valuable for any dog because it gives them a place to retreat if they ever need some alone time. It gives them a place to decompress if they're overtired, overstimulated, and setting up an area like this can easily become ugly by using a lot of traditional products, in my opinion. So before I talk about what these products are, where to find them, including what Bentley's using over here to train any dog and really to make your space more inviting, and welcoming a friendly reminder that everything I talk about will be linked in the description below the first thing I want to talk about here is the pup rug and this is by paw.com and if you've known me for any length of time you know I have been a longtime customer and massive supporter of the brand paw.com which is why it's super exciting that they're supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs by sponsoring this video and the reason I love this bed is because it also doubles as a rug this looks like a fancy rug but as you can see, it also doubles as a dog bed. And what's great about it is it has a washable, removable cover. And it has an inner slip cover that is water resistant, which has been wonderful when I was potty training Marlo because she did have a couple accidents in the beginning. And thankfully, it did not soak through to the foam. So that was really nice. It also has a non-slip grip bottom here. So if you do have this on a hard like wood or tile surface, it's not going to be sliding all over the place. <laughs> Really? So when we were crate training Marlo, what we did to help make the crate, and I'll talk about the crate in a moment, a happy place is by putting a bed that she really loved, which was this bed, right in front of the crate and had it open with the garage style door opening so that it almost created like a seamless experience for her to go in and out of the crate without feeling cramped up. Then I would use things like this licky mat, which what happens is as our dogs lick it, I just have some baby food on here, single ingredient baby food, it's green beans. Um, as she licks it like this, this naturally helps promote calming, soothing, less anxiety, hormones, and sensations. So what I would do is put this either on the bed or on the crate, or in the crate, there you go. So she could work on that while we're cooking dinner or watching some TV, and she starts to create a really strong positive association with being in and around the crate. Now, before we talk about what's behind me, let's talk about the crate area. So this is the Diggs crate. Again, it'll be linked down below. And what I have in here is another paw.com paw brand product, which is their waterproof faux fur blanket. And the reason I love this is because I love giving her treats and lick mats like this, which sometimes can make a mess. And I can easily wipe up any messes or if it gets super messy, I can easily wash it. I also love the fact that it's super soft. So again, it becomes inviting. It looks a little bit fancier than a traditional dog bed and it really elevates a space. Another thing we did to make this area super inviting and positive for Marlo and the dogs is we have her toys over here and we play with her in and around the crate. And what this does, again, it starts to make this a really safe area for her to go and retreat if she's feeling overwhelmed. A lot of times when our dogs are, especially puppies are acting out or we feel like they're being hi baby girl or we feel like they're being super super hyper or they're nipping a lot in the puppy biting stage a lot of times they're just overtired overstimulated by giving them a safe space where they want to go and hang out we're giving them a place to go and decompress and just relax because a lot of times dogs like to have alone time and space alone and that's okay we should give that to them the other thing that i have here behind me is another waterproof paw.com brand blanket and so what we did here was make the front of the crate as you can see that's the front opening more opening inviting engaging for her and this soft blanket especially when she was just getting used to us <laughs> was really comforting for her and one of their newest products is the pup protector waterproof couch lounger and they have a couple colors in that that has been awesome to help keep my couch protected if i don't want to use just a blanket for the dogs especially with the bolstered edges my senior labrador loves it i 
also find that having a space like this makes it to where my dogs want to be around this area. So not only does that make the crate training a lot easier, it makes this dedicated spot for me to work with my dogs. A huge benefit of having a space like this set up for your dog, which will make your life so much easier, especially with using one of these low profile pup rugs, is that you have a dedicated spot that you can start working with your dog on the place queue. And that's when you ask them to go to place, like on a bed like this or in their crate, and then they have to stay there until you release them. And the only rules are that they can't bark or jump up or get off until you release them. And I'll talk about how to teach that in just a moment. A place cue, there's really just a few simple rules. First being, you can't get off of this unless you're given the free or release cue. Secondly, you can kind of do whatever it is you want to do on it within reason, meaning the dog or Wally can lay down, sit or stand up while on there. He just can't excessively bark or whine. He can't be jumping up or anything crazy like that. And he has to have at least three out of four paws on it. Probably my favorite part of this cue is how simple it is to teach. A lot of times I've heard people talking about luring their dog with treats or food to get on the place cue. I've actually found that it's more effective to put your dog in a position where they want to get on the place mat or place bed like I have here. And all we did in the beginning is I stood right next to the place cue and I just waited. You can see Wally's right here and he's looking at me because he's like, I know how to do this, but what do you want? Like, it's so weird for you because usually you'll ask me to go on. But this is all I do. Right now is step one of teaching the place cue. I stand next to it and I don't ask for anything. I don't lure him on it or anything like that. So I stand here and I wait. Yes, and as soon as he got his first paw on there, I gave him the marker cue, which is Y-E-S. I follow with a reward in the beginning. I don't always rely on treats, but in the beginning it does help for most dogs or toys or even their food during mealtime. Good boy. And as long as they continue to stay on the place bed or the place mat, whatever you're using, I continue to reward, that's the key. And having this space in my living room is a constant reminder of like, oh, like we can practice on their basic cues or brain games or puzzles for them to do around the crate. It's just a really great spot for them. If you wanna see daily updates on our foster puppy here, Marlo, you can check them out at TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, just look up my name at Rachel Fasaro, or of course, click the subscribe button here because we are gonna do all kinds of puppy training and manners training and just show you her story and how she progresses yeah you're doing so good she's just awesome here we just had a vet visit and they said that she's as healthy as can be so far just a little underweight and she had already has some tartar buildup when she's only about six seven months so we're gonna work on some dental health now I want to talk about some of the foods that I really love for dogs you can click the video right here and we'll jump over there together and watch that or if you want to learn how I teach the place cue I'll click the video right here and don't forget everything I talked about was linked down below and I hope you had a beautiful day goodbye <laughs>